Welcome to the Word Gets Around video. Go back 150 years, Minehead was um, Minehead's sea protection was a shingle bank, uh, as you can see in this picture here. So it must have flooded quite often. And then around about 1900, when they built the pier, they decided to build a sea wall. Um, fortunately, the sea wall got a bit old and damaged, and uh, in the 70s. 80s and 90s it used to be a local thing to go down there and uh, you can bet your life that on any spring tide the sea would come over the wall and uh, you'd run up to the wall and hope for hopefully not get wet and try and dodge the waves um, but it would pour in and it would um, flood the front of Butlins it would uh, and at that time Seawood Way wasn't built um, and there was the uh, Arnold Palmer little amusement park there and uh, I always felt sorry for him because it was below the road height and it would and it would uh, flood. This here is the pink shelter uh, which is now demolished that used to be run by um, a chap who run who used to do bike hire in there there is a picture of him Tony Berry uh, he used to do bike hire and um, run the information center. All the windows were smashed in the front, water poured in, it was just full up with stones. Uh, everything in there inside was wrecked. You can see by the size of the stones that the water had thrown over the sea wall, uh, which was colossal. But I remember that night. Uh, it's called a once in a hundred years storm. Uh, and basically that's what they work on, that once every hundred years you would get a colossal storm. This was. This was a, a storm and a half. And I can remember walking from Mart Road to uh, to walk down the seafront and I could see the waves, the top of the waves, higher than the Queen's Hall from, from Mart Road. I wonder what it was. I thought, wasn't it all white? And it was the top of the waves. It was colossal. The sea wall was breached there, water just poured in and down the golf club end. There were some beach huts down there and they completely just disappeared. Apparently one was found on the on the railway line. Golf club was uh, was flooded. There was a wall at the end of the promenade uh, that collapsed and just water poured in. There's the dodgems at, um, at Butlins, and you can see it smashed all the uh, the wall. The arcades was flooded. That went right in. And I can remember where the underground market is. There are some garages down the bottom which is still there. And there was a car inside one of the garages and we went down the next morning as they opened it up and it looked like it had been stonewashed. Water had got in, it was just full of stones uh, and, and which gone round in a circle and basically took a lot of the paint off. Um, I think that's an, that is a, a, an older picture, I think that's one of the older floods. So that night, yes, it just uh, it, it just ripped everything up. Um, I think there was a wall along there. You can see the amount of stones that he threw over. A lot of the windows were broken in the um, in the shelters. So it was um, decided that they would build a new wall. This was going to be done in um, in stages. The wall was to be built along Key Street. And in front of that wall would be placed large boulders that would take the most of the impact. And then the other side, um, they would build the wall. In front of the wall would be like a, like steps. Then they would build groins that went out, which you can get down the beach and see. Uh, and then to heighten the beach, to take some of the uh, the sting out of the waves, um, they pump sand. And it, uh, I think it was a Dutch dredger. It was a mile offshore uh, with one hell of a long pipe and, uh, and the pipe was suspended by flotation tanks and I think there may be still one down on the seafront, it says Minehead on it uh, and that was a flotation tank where they used to attach the pipe and pump all the sand onto the beach. So the original the start was, was to drive those pylons, you can see some of the pylons that they put in. Apparently one of those, the section of wall uh, weighed 10 tonne and they were pushed 
onto the promenade in places so you can see the force of the wave. This was the building of the what they call the observation circle um, so they can get um, wheelchair access down to the beach and uh, it was an observation point. The wall itself come um, in little stone sections which I think there are some pictures on later on with a curved, it was curved to throw back the waves um, and they were brought down by lorry and I think one fell off the lorry and went into the house at Billbrook. But a lot of the boulders um, to keep the large lorries off the road, uh, the boulders were brought down by the West Somerset Railway and put on the train. This is the building of the new promenade, so where the steps are. This was a two year project. Of course, one of the problems that they had being, uh, being built over two years, that they still had to put up with the high tides and the spring tides. So a lot of the boulders were placed on the beach to try and stop the waves from hitting what they've already built. So it must have been really, really difficult to get on with what you were building. So there's a picture there of the, the steps which you can go down and see today. Sometimes they're covered over by the sand, you can't see them. And as the tide moves around. The groins were put there to hold the sand, to stop the sand from shifting. Uh, and, it, and it does the job. The only problem is, is that uh, apparently Blue Anchor don't get any of our sand, which they used to over the years. And the sand is slowly disappearing off Blue Anchor Seafront. As you can see, there's the sections of, uh, of stone there as part of the observation platform. There's the sea wall, uh, nearly completed. coming sections, there's the sections there, like I say that's what, one of those fell off the lorry and went into a house in Google. And then they just interlocked and made the wall. That's something like Easter Island, isn't it? Well, I hope you uh, enjoy these these photos. I've had them for some time. Question now is. Will the new war keep the tide back? We'll have to wait and see.